word today that's going to, if you will apply it, it will grow in your life and it will bear fruit. Can you say amen? amen? Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You surely won't die. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and she and, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed uh, fig leaves, or sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And God, the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou uh, should not eat? I'm understanding it's confession time now. Not excuse time. Help me, somebody. It's confession time. Yeah. When God asks you something, don't act like you don't already know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Adam, did you eat of that tree I told you not to eat of? Now's the time we come clean. But verse 12, and the man said, The woman. <laughs> Blame somebody. Something's got to get right here. The woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent. The serpent tricked me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt be, shall thou eat all the days of thy life. In verse 15, one more time uh, this week, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Don't you love the word of God? Don't you love the word of God? I mean, this is history. You can try to deny it. You can try to tear it down. You can try to act like it didn't happen, but it happened. I said you can try to to, uh, to revise it all you want, but it's still it's still here. This is what happened. Okay, this is what took place. This is a history, the Bible is a history of God's uh, dealings with man. And it's, it's, it's not so, so much a book about how much man loves God, but about how much God loves man. Can you say amen? Man has constantly, church, and consistently rebelled against God. From the very first man all the way down to you and I. Hello? Yet God still loves us. I said, aren't you glad this morning that God still loves you? Aren't you glad that the one who knows everything you've ever done, said, thought, looked like, thought about, all that kind of stuff, all that junk, perhaps? He knows and he still loves you. What a God. I said, what a God. I mean, I'm not like that. I wish I was more like that. There comes a point that I found in my life where I washed my hands of all. Just had enough. I wish I was more Christ-like in that area. I'm working on it. God is good. I mean, here in our text this morning, man, Adam has sinned. He did what God said not to do. Anyone ever have a child that did what you told them not to do? Huh? God's children have, God's child did what he told him not to do. And here he is hiding from God, not wanting God to find him. He's not seeking God at all, but yet God's calling out for him. God's calling. He's looking for him. Look at verse 9. The Lord God uh, called unto Adam and said, Where are you? Where are you? See, we talk a lot about going after God. How much we want God and this, that, and the other. But in reality, in reality, it's always been God who's gone after us first. Praise God. It's always been God who's pursued us first. John 6, 44 says, No man can come to me unless the Father which has sent me draw him. Okay? The good news is he's reaching out for everybody. Amen? That's the good news. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Talk about our Lord and Savior. 
the one who's called wonderful counselor, is altogether lovely. The one, I mean, there's none like him. There's none like him. I mean, the very next time the word Jesus, the name of Jesus crosses your lips, you ought to give pause right there just to think about how wonderful he is. How good he is. We just say Jesus, Jesus, and some people even say Jesus. I mean, just all of it. The next time you say Jesus, pause. The creator of the heavens and earth. One who gave himself for you. Hallelujah. Greater love, that's no man, the Bible says, than that he would lay his life down for us. That's exactly what he did. John 12, 32 said, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men to me. You understand, Jesus was talking about the cross. He was saying, if I, when I'm crucified, the cross, the death of, of, of Jesus, the one who loves you, when he, when he came to this earth and, and suffered a death that he didn't deserve for you and for I, for me this morning, he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw. There is a mighty drawing power associated with See, we don't need a better argument to, to tell our, our, our friends, uh, our family, perhaps, I think he was uh, referring to earlier, to, to draw them to the Lord. All, all we need to do is, is tell them the good news. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about how much Jesus loves them. Oh, I've heard that a million times. You just keep telling them. Because he said, if I can lift it up, I'll draw them. I'll draw them. So you just keep lifting them up, and you know what's going to happen? He's drawing, man. A man still has a decision to make. Will he come? John 15, uh, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You know, you didn't just find God one day. How do we understand God wasn't lost? <laughs> you were. You were lost. And he chose you. <clears throat> and that's why I, it wasn't because you were just all that and everybody else wasn't. <laughs> he loves you. He loves all of us. Glory to God. And then, and, and let me let you in on one other thing. He didn't choose you for failure either. He chose you for success. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, I know the, God says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Glory to God. It's like, it's like, it's like when you think all those negative, those poor me, pitiful things. You know what, God, uh, you're, you're thinking all that, God's going, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. You get to put words in my mouth. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of, uh, of bringing you a peace into your life and an expected end. This is the language God uses in Jeremiah 29, 11. 1 John 4, 10. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation, or in other words, the exact price required. Exactly what it took for our sins. And of course, there's John 3, 16. Somebody help me. The God is so that he gave his only begotten son, that he so for anybody that will believe in me shall not perish, but have ever everlasting life. Oh, church, I was thinking about that. God so loved. You know, when you so love something, I'm, I'm not sure I, I, most people have ever so loved something. When you so love something, there isn't anything you wouldn't do for it. Or them. There's, not, there's not anything you would hold back. You would do everything that you could, regardless when you so love. Regardless. Whether they deserve it, whether it's a hardship, whether it's, when you so love, you hold nothing back. He so loved us that he sent the one by whom the world's afraid. He sent the one by whom made all things, and, 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 and if he didn't make it, it wasn't made. Because <laughs> he so loved us. Friend, if it wasn't for the love of God for you and I, we'd be lost, we'd be forsaken, amen? Man on his own doesn't seek God. I'm telling you, Romans 3.11, let me see what, what the Bible says. There is none that understand. There is none that seeketh after God. No man seeks God in and of his own. What's the word I'm looking for? Initiative. He doesn't do it of his own, of his own initiative. Anyone who desires God in their life is doing so under the drawing of the Holy Spirit. In other words, Today, if you hear his voice, and they and they respond. Today, if you hear his voice, glory to God. Isaiah 55 says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. What a wonderful truth that a lost person can hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful truth we find here. Adam, in a, in a sense, Rusty, was lost. And he heard God say, where are you? Spiritually speaking. 
speaking. He was lost, spiritually speaking. He had, he had did what God said not to do. And God said, when you do it, there would be a separation that takes place, a death. And there was. But he heard the Lord God speak to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's God who initiates everything. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance, the Bible says. He draws us and offers us his very own power, his very own ability to become believers. Ephesians 2 8. It's by grace that you've been saved through faith. That not of your own, but the gift of God. It's the gift of God. John 1 12. As many as received him, to them gave he power to be to become the sons of God to as many as believed on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you go after God. That's why we love God this morning. Because he desires us. Because he loves us. Everyone. And Romans 5, 8. But God commanded. He commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before we ever turn towards God, before we ever thought about we needed some insurance from hell, before we ever saw ourselves as lost and separated and ungodly and unworthy, he gave himself. Hallelujah. Just like he called out to Adam. He hasn't stopped calling out for man. He's calling out to you today. Whatever your circumstances may be, whether you're saved this morning or you're not saved, God's calling out. And, he's, and, he, and he still says the same thing. He's always saying, where are you? Where are you? Now understand, obviously God already knows where you are. He knows where you are physically located. He knows where you are. He knows what's going on mentally with you. He knows where you are spiritually speaking. He already knows, okay? It's not like that father whose son asked him, uh, why does the wind blow? Uh, where do the rainbows come from? I don't know, son. Uh, uh, where do the clouds come from? I don't know, son. Dad, do you mind me asking you all these questions? No, son. Ask away. How else are you going to learn? <laughs> God knows the answers. God knows the answer. God knows where you are. He knew where Adam was. What he's asking uh, you this morning is, do you know where you're at? Where are you, Adam? As believers, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 6, that God has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, I know that. I know where I'm at right there. I'm born again. Lord, I know that's me. Where are you? Where are you? Truth is, when it comes to the kingdom of God, you're either in or you're out. Where are you this morning? Are you hiding from God? Are you walking with the Lord? Amen. You sewing up some leaves together to, to cover up some sin in your life? Amen. Are, are you are, are, are you are you going to are you going to expose yourself to the Lord and, and, let, and let God do what He wants to do? I don't know if that's the best word, but y'all know what I mean. <laughs> God has a plan and a place for each and every one of us. A good plan, a good place, a blessed plan, a blessed place. When God asked Adam, when he said, where are you? It's because God was wanting Adam to come to him. He was wanting Adam to be with him. Glory to God. God wants you today. Free God wants you to be included, not excluded. Y'all understand that? He wants you to be included in what he's doing in the earth today. Not excluded from what, the, what God's accomplishing today in this world. God needs you. God needed Adam to see himself. Adam, where are you? Adam, you did what I told you not. I'm just talking right now. But I, I'm, I'm, if I, Adam, you did what I told you not to do. You hide it over there. Adam, where are you this morning? Come on, man. Where are you? God needed Adam to see himself. To see himself hiding in the bushes instead of walking with God like he was created to do. Thinking of excuses as to why it wasn't his fault instead of owning up. What's the Bible saying? We're faithful to confess our sins. He's faithful to forgive us our sins. I've had enough of people making excuses for everything that they're doing. It's time. I'd like to see a little bit more owning up going on in the world today. A little bit more uh, taking responsibility for one's actions today. Folk, folk run around doing all kinds of crazy things in the street and, 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 and saying that you made me do it. No, you did that. That's your choice. No, folk just want to shuck responsibility, pass the blame. I mean, the very first two people on the earth passed the blame. They, instead of admitting that they had done wrong, Adam, where are you? Well, God, I did it, you know. No. The woman you gave me, Lord. 
What the, the snake, Lord? I mean, the first conversation we found with a man and a woman in the Bible, the first man and a woman, and they're passing the buck. They're blaming, they're, 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 they're not wanting to, to, to accept responsibility for their own actions. Some things haven't changed. The Bible tells us, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. How many think you can probably examine yourself? Test yourself to see where you are. Huh? Come on, somebody. Oh, I know you can. Because, how do I know you can? Because you, I want you to examine everybody else. I, I want you to test everybody else. I want you to judge everybody else. But you can't, you can't judge yourself? Yes, you can. Jesus said, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Hey, before you worry about that little bit that's going on in them, theirs, and everybody else's life, do something about that two by four hanging out of your life. Did, did he not say that? What two by four? What two by four about all the music stands around? You ever thought that you might not be qualified to help everybody you think you're helping? Look at your own life. When you get it together, then you start passing information to everybody else. Just a thought. Because if what you are doing isn't working for you, what makes you think it's going to work for somebody else? And if you aren't walking in it, what qualifies you to give it to somebody else? There's a word for that. It begins with an H. It ends with a Y. And everybody hates it when they're called that. So don't be that. You can examine yourself. I like what the prophet Junior said. He said, if you'd mind your own business, you'd be busy all the time. And they're right there. <laughs> Prophet Junior right there. But, you, but if you're going to do it, you've got to be honest with yourself. Stop grading yourself on the curve. You know what I'm saying? You don't understand what I'm saying this morning. Stop making all those excuses you make for yourself. Just call it how it is for yourself. Like you call it how it is for everybody else that you're helping. Haggai 1.5. Turn there with me if you would. Haggai 1.5. If you got my version of the Bible, it's page of 1442. I said, how did preacher just get to those, those, those little books so quick? Why do you ask the page number down? Silly. <laughs> <laughs> page number 1442. Bam! Haggai. What do you study to show yourself approved? Mm -hmm. you know study to know what page your Bible book is on. Mm -hmm. Let me read to you while you turn there. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, in other words, God speaking. He said, Consider your ways, or uh, set your heart on your own ways. Or as somebody might say, <clears throat> Indict your own life for a minute. Meditate on your own <laughs> self for a second or two. Consider your ways. You sow much, and you bring in a little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but there, you, you aren't warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to be put into a bag with holes. Exclamation point, I guess. <laughs> he said, Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> Think about what he's saying. Consider your ways. You're sowing, but you ain't reaping anything. You're working real, real hard. Look what he says. You sow much, but bring in little. How many understand that's not how it's supposed to work? Hello? How many understand that's not how God plans sowing and reaping? You eat, but you're never full. You drink, but you're never full. You clothe, but you're not satisfied. You're not warm. He that earneth wages, earneth the wages to be put in a bag with holes. In other words, you're working 40, 50 hours a week, and you've got nothing. You're falling further behind. Thus says the Lord of God. He repeats himself. Consider your ways. In other words, something's wrong. Something ain't working. Something's wrong. Understand what, we just, what, what he just said right here? You sown what you ain't getting. 
You, 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 you drink and you're not full. That's not the description of a blessed state, is it? That's not, that's not the description of someone who's blessed of the Lord, who's someone who's walking in favor, is that you're sowing and you ain't getting anything back, is that you're eating but you're never full, you're drinking but you never have enough, your, your clothes aren't enough, you're working all week long but you can't get ahead. That's not the description of a blessed state, yet so many people live right there. And so much of what goes on in our life, listen to me, church, so much of what goes on in our life, if we would just... Think about it. Consider our ways. Why is it that I'm so that I'm not moving anything hard? Why is it that I'm working hard like this and gaining nothing? Why is it that, y'all see, if we just would stop, okay? Be honest. Something's wrong here. This ain't how it's supposed to, this isn't how it's supposed to work. If we just think about what's happening, this, it ought not to be like this. You know what Proverbs 426 says? Ponder the path of your feet. Ponder the path of your feet. In other words, give some serious thought to, to the path you're on, of what's going on. Give it some serious thought. If you'll do that, if you'll consider your ways, it may stop you from making a, a bad decision. Somebody say amen. amen. How, about, how about that same bad decision? Come on, somebody. Amen. Over and over again. But most people don't. They don't take time to evaluate what's going on. They just keep marching right up off the cliff. Family's gone to hell. Yeah, I know. Ain't got nothing. Yeah, I know. Ain't turning around, ain't considering nothing. They just keep on doing exactly what they've been doing, heading exactly the direction they've been heading to, mad about it, pouting about it, complaining to everybody who'll listen about it, look at me about it, but they won't stop. They just keep on. I said, whoa, stop and think about what you're doing. That ain't right. Could be a marriage, could be your kids, could be your job, could be a whole lot of things. Friend, we already know that there's an enemy out there that's trying to keep us so occupied with everything, okay? So you won't take, I think one of the reasons is, is so that you just won't take a minute to think about what's going on. To stop. Stop walking off the cliff for just a moment. So, wait a minute. Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that he's God. No, we stop for a moment. Stop for a moment. I'm telling you, a hectic, chaotic lifestyle is detrimental. I'm not even telling you nothing you don't know. It's detrimental to your walk with God. What does the Bible say about confusion and strife when, when it's present? So is every evil thing. Hello? Take a moment. Be still. And understand. He's got a plan for you. Understand. What is the mind of the Lord over this situation? What I'm doing, what I've been doing, isn't working. I'm not going to keep on just... I'm not going to just Get white knuckle on the steering wheel and just keep driving this way. Bless God. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm going to put the brakes on this thing for me. I may need to turn around. I don't like the direction this thing's heading. If you don't like the direction your life's heading, let me, let me let you in on something. Things aren't going to change automatically. Help me somebody. They aren't going to change automatically. I mean, some things in life are automatic. I mean, today will turn into tomorrow on its own. You don't have to do nothing about that. It'll happen. Summer will turn to fall. will turn to winter. It'll come back to spring. That'll just happen. You don't have to do anything about it. Life, uh, life will take you from today until tomorrow. I guarantee it. Whatever tomorrow may mean to you or be for you. You're going to get there one way or the other. It's going to happen. But how your future turns out? That's, that's, that's not automatic. That's greatly determined by the choices that you make today. Consider your ways. Will there be change in your life? I don't know. Will there? That's on you. I'm reminded of the, I mean, folk don't like change. I'm reminded of the story of the two guys who were shipwrecked on the raft and they've been floating for several days and things have gotten really desperate for them. Finally, one of them got on his knees and began to pray. 
oh God, I've not been good. I, I drank too much. I, I sinned. I did this, that, and the other. If you'll just save us, I promise that I'll hold it, the other guy said. Don't say another word. I think I see lamb. <laughs> so many of us are like that. Oh, it's bad. And now are we going to finally turn to God? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before I turn all the way, I think I see a little, a little glimmer of hope over there. Hold off on, hold off on this. I'll get back with you, Lord. So many are only willing to change if they absolutely have to. Even if they don't like everything going on. It's important to consider where you are and where you are headed. One more, one more verse this morning, real quick. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis the 12th chapter. Come on, God's good. His word is good. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Let me read while you turn turning there. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I'll show thee. And I'll make of thee a great nation, and I'll bless thee, and I'll make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I'll bless them that bless thee, and I'll curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Woo! Pretty God's got a plan. Come on, church. God's got a plan for you. I'm reading this, and he's talking to Abram. God had a plan for Abram. God had a place for Abram. You're no different. He's got a plan. He's got a place for you, too. Somebody say amen. amen. He hasn't forgot you. He knows where you are and he knows where you should be. Hello? Amen. He, he wants you to be in a place of blessing. He wants you, I read right here that he wants you blessed and to be a blessing. Amen. He wants you blessed and he wants you blessing others. That's the place he wants you to be at. But he knows. He knows if you're in a rut. He knows if you need encouragement. He knows if you're heading in the wrong direction. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. But have you taken the time to snap out of it, to wake up and smell the proverbial coffee, as it were, to consider uh, when it comes to this plan, am I in it? Come on, somebody. Everybody in here already knew God had a plan for him, don't you? Well, have you thought about it lately if you were in it or not? God's still asking, where are you? Can you answer that? Today, if you find yourself in a place of worry, anxiety, depression, self-pity, well, it's time to move on, friend. I said, it's time to move on. I said, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Yeah. You look at the place you're at and you find hate and selfishness. It's all about me. It's time to move on. Maybe you're in a place of, oh, well, is what it is. And you've just settled for whatever. Or you're in a place of laziness, of disobedience. You tell me. Examine your own self. I'm not here to judge you this morning. The Bible tells me not to be a judge, to judge another man's servant. It tells me not to be a judge of everybody else. To judge things pertaining to me. If I work on that real hard and real good, then maybe I could help somebody else. But until I've got this right, I'm not a whole lot of help for somebody else. Come on, guys. You examine yourself, it may be time to move on, spiritually speaking. You see where you're at and you don't like it, relocate. God told Abraham, he said, you need to move. He said, you need to move. These people you're running with, this isn't for you. They're delaying the promise. And look at verse 4. They're delaying the promise. Look what, look what God told him to leave the way from the kindred. And look what he does, verse 4. So Abraham left as the Lord had spoken unto him. Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Haran, Haran. Oh, Abraham obeyed God, didn't he? For the most part. He left. He left country. He obeyed him. Not as much as a lot of folk obey him. And some of what he said, he left, but he didn't leave alone. Took Lot with him. Well, he obeyed God for the most part. Sounds like a lot of folk to me. I find myself in that category all the time, more than I'd like to admit. For the most part. But you know, 
cut to the chase, Abraham didn't start seeing the plan of God's life, the plan that God had for him in his life until he obeyed what God said. We find we find it's over here, Genesis chapter 13, a chapter and 14 verses later, and, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up your eyes now. And there's a promise. Not from that partial, not from not just because Abraham left. Yeah, God, God told him to leave. But he said, leave everything. And he took some things. Go with me today. Mm -hmm. See, no matter your environment, your family name, the side of town you're from, the mistakes you've made, the situation you're in, God has a plan. And God has a place. Are you in it? The Bible says this, if you're born again, Colossians 3, your life is hid with Christ in God. Praise God. Someone say praise God. Praise I have God. a place in Christ. When, when he shall appear, guess who's appearing with him, somebody? Yeah, that's right. That's the right answer. Doug said me, and that's the right answer. When, when he shall appear, guess who else is appearing? Say it. Me. me. I know y'all wanted to say me, but I said me. He's <laughs> calling this morning. Can you hear him? Where are you? If you'll listen, you'll hear him. Where are you? It's not that he don't know where you are in every aspect of your life. Do you know where you are? Do you know that you've been heading that way? You've been, you've been heading in that direction so long that you are this close to going over the edge. Do you know that? So? You might not know that. He knows that. He's saying, consider your ways. He's saying, where are you? Are you here today? And if just one more thing happens, is it going to be? Is it going to be the straw that broke the camel's back? You know what I'm saying? Where are you? He says, consider what's going on in your life. Turn. Get this stuff worked out. Don't. He, he doesn't want you to live life so full of everything else that it doesn't take but nothing, and you're overflowing on on there. You, you can't. You're, you're broke. You're, you're, you, you can't handle it. And it may not even be nothing, but because you're already up to here, all it takes is that. That's not God's place for you. That's not his plan for you. Consider your ways. In other words, simply think about what's going on. You're saying, amen. Where are you this morning? Do you know where you are? Y'all stand up with me. Glory to God. Don't you love Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, I say that because God has an answer. God has a solution. You may, you may know exactly where you are this morning. You may be in a place where you just feel totally overwhelmed, totally uh, hope, uh, helpless to change anything. But God knows that. And the reason he wants you to figure it out is so that he can do something about it for you. Can you say amen? amen. The, only, the reason he wants you to consider your ways is so that you'll see that in and of yourself, nothing's changing. I must need the Lord. I must need God to do this for me. I must need His help in this area. Mm -hmm. I say amen. Amen. I tell you, he's ready to help. He's available mm -hmm. today if you hear His voice. Don't harden your heart. Respond. Today, turn to Him. Today. Somebody say today. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you that you're always speaking to us, Lord God. Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you that you so love us today, this day, that you sent Jesus Christ to save us. You gave your only son to save us. Father, I thank you that that great salvation is available today. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. That means anybody can. That means everybody should. It could mean everybody might not. That's not his will. His will is that none would perish. So whether you're here today, you're watching by internet, you're watching tomorrow night or something, where are you? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you walking in victory? Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost? Are you happy? God wants you happy. Where are you? You can't, if, you, if you're not satisfied with the place that you want, God has a word for you. Amen? You would just give him it. Be word. Somebody say amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for your message today. Thank you for
our hearts near close to you, Lord God. Thank you that you're not a condemner. No, therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. God's not condemning nobody, and I certainly am not condemning nobody. But yet God came that you might be set free. You can be bound up, you can be free today. But that's your choice. See you in your Amen? Amen. If I can pray with you this morning, I want to pray with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you. Just believe God. Stand on God's word with you. Amen. Praise God for the good report that Mr. Mike gave us earlier. Amen. Praise God. Clear love. Amen. That's the way he made them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good confession. Come on, everybody. I'm strong in the Lord. I am more than a conqueror. I am less than healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am a greater one than in me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a child of God. Woo! Tell somebody.